welcome again to yet another lesson on your Grade 11 English Language Syllabus. Today's lesson will help you even beyond your O-Level paper. Today, we will learn how to understand images and know how to identify the messages signified by the images. For your exam, you may get different types of images. You may need to write something about them. And maybe you may be asked about the messages that these images carry. Let's look at some of the types of images that you may be asked to comment on. Posters. You may be asked to decipher the messages that they carry. Sayings by important people in history. You may get some sayings that you may need to figure out and infer. Notices and signs. You may be asked to figure out what the signs mean and you may even get to match them with phrases already given. We will be using your textbooks for this lesson, so have them ready. Turn to page 40 in your pupil's book, Unit 4, Activity 7. Let's look at the posters together. You are asked to read the following posters and write the message conveyed by each one. Look at poster 1. It urges you to save water and it states that the world is in your hands. There is also a fact presented at the bottom uh, within inverted commas. We are told that water scarcity is now the single biggest threat to global food security. This is true, of course. Scarcity means a shortage. In this case, a shortage of water. The second poster shows a fish swimming in the ocean. The ocean seems to have trash floating alongside the fish. An old shoe and an old tire. The fish seems to be speaking the words given in the poster. You don't trash your own home, do you? Why trash mine? The meaning of this is clear. It's urging us to stop littering the ocean with garbage or trash. The third one may not look like a poster, but seems to have the same function. The picture given is quite cute, a light bulb switching off the electricity. Alongside the image are the words use low energy, low wattage bulbs, turn off lights when they are not needed and make use of natural light in classrooms and offices by opening windows and blinds. This image tells us that it is necessary to be more mindful of using synthetic or electric light. Save energy by using some of the advice they have given. The fourth picture shows an open garbage bin. Alongside that, some advice has been given. Share newspapers and magazines, recycle newspapers, and reuse folders and envelopes. Some very sound advice. This is one that advocates the recycling of paper. Instead of destroying forests, we can recycle and save trees, don't you think? The fifth and last poster given shows a group of animated soil organisms. The message alongside this picture is do not use fertilizer and pesticides excessively. They destroy beneficial soil organisms. Which is true. We destroy a lot of beneficial soil organisms when we spray toxic pesticides and strong fertilizers. Below these posters, you have a table that you have to fill. The first one has already been done for you. Let's do the rest together. The table has been divided into two columns, the poster number and the message it conveys. Poster number one, save water, don't waste water. Poster number two, don't litter the ocean, be careful not to throw trash into the ocean. Poster number three, save electricity and use more natural light, don't waste electricity. Poster number four, 
recycle and reuse paper. Poster number 5. Don't overly use fertilizers and pesticides. Fertilizers and pesticides should not be used excessively. That was easy, wasn't it? Let's now quickly do the fill in the blanks exercise in the following activity. This exercise is based on the posters we just looked at. This exercise will be good practice. Complete these sentences using adjectives and adverbs found in the posters. The words given are natural, soil, global, single, excessively. We have to preserve natural resources for the future. Accumulation of polythene in the environment has become a global environmental issue. Cutting down trees causes soil erosion. Water is precious. We should not waste a single drop. The monsoon rains were excessively heavy this year. Now let's swiftly move on to page 48, Unit 5, Activity 1. You are introduced to five sayings or universal truths. At the end of this activity, there are two questions that are asked. Do you agree with these sayings? And you are asked to find the message conveyed by them. Let's discuss them together and you can answer the two questions thereafter with ease on your own. Look at the first saying. It says, Remember that time is money. What do you think that means? How can you put a value on time? Well, that is exactly what it means. Time is money. In other words, time is valuable and you are asked to make a note of that. I certainly agree with it to some extent. Time is valuable and should not be wasted for sure. You can never get the time that you have lost back. So you should use it very wisely. The second saying states, time stops for no one. The meaning of this is to do whatever it is you have to do when time is available before it is too late. I agree with this statement and I'm sure you do too. You have to finish whatever it is you have to within set time limits. The third saying is once again about time. It says, time is what we want most, but what we use worst. I guess this also can be true for those who waste time. So this has been generalized, but I am sure it differs depending on the person. So I might have to disagree with this saying. Well, you don't have to agree with every saying stated. If you have a valid reason for not agreeing with something, you must use it to justify your stance. We all want time, but we use it so badly. That is what the meaning is of this saying. The fourth saying states, one always has time enough if one will apply it well. This is so true. I agree with this, but that is my personal view. You can choose to disagree. I think planning out your day is essential if you want to do all the things you have decided to do within that particular day. The final saying is by Charles Darwin, a scientist best known for his contributions to the theory of human evolution. The saying goes, a man who dares to waste one hour of time has not discovered the value of life. Clearly, according to Darwin, it is unthinkable to waste even an hour in a day. Yes, he is Darwin, but relaxing and doing nothing is also important, isn't it? Now let's look at another type of image that may come in your paper. Signs. Let's take your workbook. Revision 1 on page 37. Question 2. You are given some signs in black and white and you are asked to match the notices with the places. Let's first read through the places at the bottom of the page. A. At an expressway. B. At a cinema. C. In a public place or park. 
D. At a construction site. E. Near a staircase. And F. On private property. Let's look at image one. You are expected to place all rubbish in the bins that are provided. This is a sign that will go up in a public place or a park. So it's C. The second sign states, now showing Madagascar and King Kong. Clearly, these are names of movies. So it is a sign that will be found in the cinema. The third sign is placed next to a road and states, no stopping or turning. It is therefore a sign you would find at an expressway. An expressway is a high-speed divided highway and so it requires vehicles to move quickly without stopping. The fourth sign is of a man climbing a set of stairs. It states, keep to the left on stairs, hold on to the handrail where possible. Clearly, from the image, we realize that this sign should be placed near a staircase. The fifth sign states, no trespassing. Trespassing means to enter someone's property or land without permission. So a sign like this would be found in a private property. The final sign given is danger, men working overhead. This is an important sign to have around, especially if you happen to be walking near a construction site. This will make you be more alert when walking next to a building that is being built. So this sign could be matched with at a construction site. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Images are easy and you should not find them too difficult to decipher or figure out. I do hope you found this lesson useful. Please do subscribe to our channel and avail yourselves to more exciting lessons on your O-Level English Language syllabus. Until next time, goodbye.